Hi everyone and welcome to the Wayworld Outreach Sermon. We truly believe that this message is going to make a major impact in your life. And if you would like to make an impact in someone else's life, would you head on over to thewayworldoutreach.org slash donate where you can actually make an impact today. Now let's get ready for this week's word. We're gonna go through a story today and pull out some spiritual principles. And we're gonna look at a man named Stephen that started, he was in a spiritual battle, major spiritual battle. And by, by the time it's all said and done, he wins. And I'll say why he wins. He wins because he wasn't conquered by what was coming against him. I'm gonna explain that to you. He wasn't conquered by what was coming against him. I'll even say, let me explain a little bit. You lose when you're conquered by what's coming against you. So you gotta identify what's coming against you. What's coming against you? Are there angry people coming against you? Because if anger is coming against you, you lose when you become just like them. You lose when what is coming against you has conquered you. It's conquered your mind, it's conquered your thinking, it's conquered your attitude. You lose when what's coming against you has conquered you. Some of us think we're winning, but we're not winning because we got conquered by an attitude of someone else. You're looking a lot more like your hater than your God. Something happened. You're looking a lot more like them than your God. So you were conquered, and tonight, if you were conquered, we're gonna get set free because Jesus specializes in deliverance to set you free from what conquered you. Amen? Father, have your way tonight, Lord. Speak to us, Lord, in this portion of Scripture. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's look at Acts chapter 6, verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. So we're seeing a man, he's, it, right now they're giving an overview of who this guy is. And, and this is what we start seeing. He's a man full of faith, full of power, and, and he does, this is what he did. And, and he did great wonders, signs among the people. So this guy has proof that he has a supernatural relationship with God. And the proof is his faith and the power and the miracles that are in his life. And I want you to get this, as a believer, as a believer, be, walking in the supernatural should be normal. Because this is why I'm saying that. If you're full of the power of God, shouldn't it, shouldn't there be some proof in your life that there's actual things that people can't explain, like you have joy, no one can explain. Why are you joyful with all the mess going on? How can you have hope when all of this is surrounding you? You should be depressed by now. Why aren't you depressed right now? You should have lost your mind by now because other people that went through the stuff you're going through lost their mind. How could you still have your sanity, your peace, supernatural peace, supernatural joy? There should be some proof. I'm going to say there should be some proof. Then there, then there arose some, some from what is called the synagogue of the freedom, synagogue, a freedman, I'm sorry, freedom, a freedman, Cyrenians, Alexandri Alexandrians, and those from Cilicia and Asia disputing with Stephen. Verse 10, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Verse 11, then they secretly induced men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, and they came, and they came upon him, seized him, and brought him to the council. They also set up false witnesses who said, this man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say, that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered to us. And all who sat in the council, looking steadfastly at him, saw his face as the face of an angel. So we're gonna, do, we're gonna develop that. So now we're gonna talk about four steps or to, get, to get battle ready. Number one, 
How do we get battle ready? Get a faith fill-up. Stephen was full of what? He was full of what? He was full of faith. Now, if we're going to be... If we're going to get victory in this battle, it's very important. It's a fight of faith. What you believe is going to determine your results. If somehow during the struggle, you believe that you're defeated, that it's over, and that God has left you, it's not the circumstance that defeated you. It's what you think about the circumstance is what's defeating you. If you keep the faith, and what is faith? It's confidence, conviction that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things, the provider and bestower of eternal salvation through Christ, full of faith in God, means faithful. It, it means also belief that God is able to do what he said he would do. And this is what God is saying. When you're going through a difficulty and you're going through a problem, keep the faith. And it's important to hold on to the faith and have, someone say, get full of faith. That means don't get full of doubt. Don't get full of unbelief. Don't get full of anger. Don't get full of craziness. Get full of what? Faith. Don't get full of complaining. I'm saying this because either you're full of faith or you're full of something else. I know it's going dangerous there. But I'm asking you right now, are you battle ready? And you're only battle ready when you're full of faith. You're never going to be battle ready full of anger, full of alcohol, full of drugs, full of weed. I'm just asking you, what are you full of? You're never going to win a battle full of fear, full of anxiety, full of depression. The truth is that we could be full of faith. That means we could be full of confidence. That means we could be full of hope. That means we could be full of praise. That means we could be full of everything that we need to get through this battle. And this is what the Bible says. If you're full of faith, when it's all said and done, when you're full of faith, there'll be nothing impossible for you. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says this. I can do all things through Christ. That's faith. This is what the Bible says. There's nothing impossible with God. That means with God, with faith in God, there's nothing that I'm facing that I cannot overcome, that you cannot overcome. The enemy is not after your things. He's not after your house. He's not after your car. He's not after your kids. He's after your faith. And sometimes he touches things to get to our faith. Some of us think because we lost something that God's not with us. And the devil convinced you. He told you, if God was with you, all this wouldn't have happened. There's an argument coming against your mind. Just because you went through some battles or you went through some difficulties, you've had some losses in your life, does not mean that God is not with you. The truth is you might have had some failures, but God's not done with you. Does anybody have some faith for a comeback, some faith for a turnaround, some faith that their best days are ahead of them? Say with me, my best days are ahead of me. Man, if you believe that, it doesn't matter how it looks right now. You could get excited a little bit. It's a fight of what? Faith, faith, faith. It's a fight to keep the faith. Let's look at 1 Timothy 6.12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. 2 Timothy 4, 7 says this. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. I, when they said I've kept the faith, it's kind of like this. You know what I think about? I should have got, I should have brought it with me. I think about a football. As long as you're running, if you're on a football team, if you're running with the ball and gaining the yardage, this was the truth. You can score. It doesn't matter if you're running towards the end zone. If you don't have the football, no one's paying attention to you. You can't score. One of the things that football players try to do is strip you of the ball. Because if they strip you of the ball, you can't win. You might have the talent, you might have the ability, 
and there you might be standing in the end zone no one cares you do, could do your end zone dance if you don't have the ball there's no touchdown say so what does that have to do with life this is what it has to do with the enemy is saying if I could get your faith in God if I could strip you of your faith in God and have you begin to doubt your existence, begin to fill you with confusion, this is what's going to happen. I've stripped you of your faith, and when I've stripped you of your faith, I've stripped you of your victory. I wonder who has been trying or what has been trying to strip us of our faith in God. I've seen people leave the church because someone was rude with them in church. So you're going to let someone that's rude strip you of your faith, strip you of your victory, strip you of your ministry, strip you of your turnaround, strip you of your healing, strip you of your salvation. Don't let nobody or any circumstance strip you of your faith. You might have lost everything, but there's one thing I got. I still got faith, and as long as I still got faith, I got a victory in my future. So fight of faith to keep the faith. Now, how do we get filled with faith? We get filled with faith, and you guys have heard this, by hearing the word. Today, I'm going to give you a faith fill-up. How do you get a faith fill-up? By what you hear. How do you get a faith fill-up? By what you hear. What you start hearing and start focusing on, it's what you start believing. So we're here to hear the truth. And the truth is that God is with you. And the truth is the truth. This is, God says, I have plans for you for good and not evil, a hope and a future. What God is saying, the truth is, if, if I'm for you, who can come against you? The truth is all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. That's the truth. It's going to work out for good. I'm giving you a faith fill up. We could get a faith fill up. Look, at it says in Romans 10, 17. So when faith comes by faith, so fa then faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. What we are hearing will be full of. That's why the enemy has so many options to fill our ear gates. So much junk out there. I mean, you could be on YouTube for hours just, how do I know I've done it? Just filling my ears with nonsense. Okay? Music. Some of us right now have been listening to destructive music. And then you're wondering why you have a destructive life. There's no dreams, there's no substance. You're just listening to someone cursing in your ear all day. And what you're filling your ears with, you're filling your heart with. You can't be full of faith if you're full of Tupac. I know he died, but come on, somebody's still listening. If we're going to be full of faith, this is what we got to do. We got to be listening to the word. That's why I got to come and get my weekly, bi-weekly fill up. That's why I come on Sunday and then I come on Wednesday and I even should come on Tuesday. Why? Because I need a fill up. Have you ever had a car that wastes a lot of gas? Have you ever had a car that wastes a lot of gas? I got a Camaro home. I don't even drive it. It gets, it gets like eight, seven miles per gallon. So I look at it. Because I can't pass by a gas station without my car telling me, you got to go in. And if I don't fill it up, you know what's going to happen? It's going to be on the side of the road, stranded. It looks good, but it can't go nowhere because it has no gas. Some of you in this room... You've been, come on, you're on the side of the road, giving up, hitchhiking, and God says, if you just stop and get a fill up every, come on, get a fill up. And, I, and, and some of us right now, we got some big dreams, some big vision, and you take a lot of gas. The bigger the dream, come on, the more horsepower. Come on, the, the, the bigger ideas that God has given you, the bigger struggles that you're going through, the more gas that you need. But I got good news. Jesus paid the price, and all you got to do is get a position, hear the word, and get a fill up. See, when we're full of faith, we're also full of power. 
The scripture says that this will happen. Stephen was full of faith and power. Full of faith and what? When we're full of faith, we're full of supernatural power. Power, power, power. That word power is dunamis, it means strength. It means God's ability. So when we're full of faith, we're also full of strength. When you have strength, this is what, when you have strength and you have endurance, this is what happens. You could fight. You could resist. But also the word dunamis means God's ability. Power to perform miracles. Moral power and excellence. See, you don't have a, this, you don't have a moral problem. You got a faith problem. Why well, just keep falling in this same sin over and over? This is the issue. When you get full of faith, you'll be full of moral power as well. You'll be able to say yes to the things you're supposed to say yes to, and you'll be able to resist the things that, self, that cause self-destruction. What we need is some faith and power. We got, someone said we got supernatural power. You know why we need supernatural power? Because we have some supernatural resistance coming against us. It's a real battle. So number two, so how do we fight this fight of faith? Get, get a faith fill up. How do we get a faith fill up? Through hearing the word. How do we get a faith fill up? How do we get a faith fill up? Some of you guys right now might have to go on a diet. And I'm not talking about physical diet. You can still eat Taco Bell on this one. I'm talking about an ear diet. That for a month, all you do is listen to some preaching and worship. That you go on YouTube and erase your history so it starts giving you all, those, all that junk and go in there and just put a whole bunch of preachers. You can put me in there too. I'll speak to you during the week. <laughs> Download the app. You might have to go on. See, you, right now you're in a real battle and, God, and you've been saying, I feel so weak. And God's saying, I know you feel weak, but you don't have to remain weak. I got strength for you, but you're going to have to change your ear diet. Some of you guys are going to have to stop hanging around all the negative people in your life. You got some people that you've given an ear to that are filling you with doubt, filling you with fear, filling you with bitterness, filling you with anger. And you got to shut them down and you got to tell them, I'm on a diet. So what aren't you eating? No, it's not what I'm not eating. It's what I'm not hearing. Because I'm no longer going to hear that mess because I hear that and they get full of it. And I'm tired of being full of it. I didn't cuss. Relax. I want to be full of the word. I want to be full of hope. I want to be full of dreams. I want to be full of vision. God is saying, if you could give me your ear, I will change your destiny. I will change your results. I will give you a victory in every single battle that you're in. If I could just get your ear. Someone's going to go on a ear diet. Number two, how do we, how do we win every battle? How do we get battle ready? Number two, be faithful to your present assignment. Our present assignment, our present faithfulness to the assignments that God has given us qualifies us for future promotion. If the enemy can get us to quit now, being faithful to the things, to our assignments now, disloyal, complain, demean our present condition. He has conquered our ability to progress. Now, faithfulness to our present assignments. Now, we're talking about Stephen. Let's talk about Stephen's progress. Stephen was a believer and he became a great believer. You know how he became a great believer? He developed his relationship with God. He, someone say he developed it. He, he was known for his faithfulness to God. So when they ask all the people, who are the faithful ones in our congregation? They pick seven guys and say, that guy, Stephen, is super faithful. He's super committed to God and he has a great reputation of living for God. The first level of growth is, and leadership, I'll say this, the first level of leadership is being able to lead yourself. If you cannot lead yourself, you can't lead anybody else. See, I'm going to give a bonus to some parents in here. 
you, you want to have some respect with your kids and you want them to trust your leadership. But this is the issue. When they look at our lives, they see a whole bunch of inconsistencies. And because they see those inconsistencies, they don't trust our decision-making abilities. And when they don't trust our decision-making abilities, what happens? We develop a reputation in their minds that I can't trust mom, I can't trust dad, dad. They go to church and they say one thing and when they come home, they live completely different. Someone say self-leadership. We got to learn how to be faithful with the assignments that we have right now. I know there's big dreams in the future, but understand this. Do not despise the responsibilities you have right now. Someone say be faithful. God promotes faithfulness. So Stephen starts leading himself. Then he gets a promotion. You know what his promotion is? Serve tables. And he's faithful with that. Then he gets another promotion. He becomes a deacon. And he's faithful to that. And we're seeing here, he got a major promotion because now he's like an evangelist, it looks like. And he's also a miracle worker. He's walking in great power. But he grew into that. God promotes faithfulness. Matthew 25, 21. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things and I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of of your Lord. This is what God is saying. If you continue being faithful, what I've given you right now, this is what I'm going to do. You've been faithful over little. I'm going to give you greater responsibility. You've been faithful in serving where you're at now, and I'll give you an opportunity to serve at a higher level. The promotion for faithfulness is greater service. God will give you more people to serve and more people to take care of and more people to influence. Does anybody want a promotion? And when I'm saying battle ready, this is exactly where the battle is fought. The enemy does not want me or you to raise our level of influence, to reach more people, and to fulfill our destiny. It's a fight. It's a fight. Being unfaithful, being faithful leads to promotion. Say it with me. Being faithful leads to what? Being unfaithful leads to loss. Matthew 25, 28, therefore take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will, be, and he will have an abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Now this is a big deal. So th there's a battle for faithfulness. That means right now, there's a resistance against me and you to quit to throw in the towel, to be, to be disloyal. See, the enemy, if he's going to take your family away, he'll start with your faithfulness. He goes, I'll get to the family. I'll destroy everything if I could start making him or her unfaithful to the assignments they have now. I don't have to, see, what I'm doing is I'm setting it all up for future battles. If they'll be unfaithful now, I could, in the future, I already have this all set up for wins, for victory, based on their present unfaithfulness. I got good news for you. If you've been unfaithful, let's just make up our minds today. Say, God, forgive me. I want some faithfulness because I want to be battle ready. So when the next battle comes, I'm ready to face it. And I want you to be able to declare over me promotion. Now, once God says promotion, there's no devil in hell that can stop that promotion. When God told Joseph that you're going to be a ruler, you're going you're gonna to be a worldwide ruler. The only thing that could have stopped that from happening was the temptations that were coming against him for him to be unfaithful to God and be unfaithful to Potiphar, which was his master at the time. So, his, so Potiphar's wife comes and she's, 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 she's a desperate housewife. <laughs> Potiphar's wife is a desperate housewife. So now Joseph is walking, but he has a, he has a, come on, he has a dream. He has a vision. He has a prophetic word over him. Potiphar's wife is coming. What she's trying to see, what the enemy's trying to do is cancel out the prophecy. 
cancel out the destiny, cancel out the victory. So he goes, I don't have to worry about the future. If I can make him unfaithful now, I'll capture the future. So that's why when Jesus was, get, before, when he starts his ministry, the first person he meets up, meets up with is the devil. And the devil says, turn these stones into bread. And Jesus said this because he was bad already. When you're bad already, he was full of the word. When you're full of the word, you're full of faith. So when, so when, so when under pressure, this is what's happened. Whatever you're full of comes out. Under pressure, whatever you're full of what? Comes out. So what happened to Potter for, Potter? what happened to Joseph? He ran. He ran away from his temptation. He takes off running. You know why? Because if he hangs out with that temptation, she would strip him of his faithfulness. And if she strips him of his faithfulness, she, he takes, she, she takes his dream and his vision. Some of you right now, God is saying, don't you quit. Don't you give up. You remain faithful to your assignment. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure you got a victory and every dream and every promise that I've given you will come to pass. But just be faithful. Stick it out. Don't you give up. And number three, how do we get battle ready? Ask for wisdom. They, it says Stephen, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. He had wisdom. He had supreme intelligence. Wouldn't it be great to be as smart as God? What I mean by that is, is get God's perspective about your situation. Do you know that every battle that you're in, you know how battles are won? Battles are won through strategic implementations. Great generals have strategy. They don't win by mere force. They win by strategy. The battles that you're going to win are not just going to be by mere force. You're going to learn how to overcome what you're facing. Right now, you're facing some serious battles, some, come on, some serious resistance. And God is saying, why don't you ask me for some strategy? If you'll get some wisdom from me and seek it, if you ask me, I'll give you supreme intelligence. That means the devil won't be able to outsmart you and you're not going to make mistakes under pressure. You're going to be able to make sound decisions. You know what messes us up in life? It's not the situation. This is what messes up in life is the choices we're making. That's, under pressure, man, we make some crazy choices. When we're under pressure, sometimes the devil says, hey, I got an escape for you. Be careful. I'm going to say, ladies, under pressure, do not pick your next boyfriend. I feel so lonely right now, pressure. Do not make a decision when you feel real lonely. Ask for some wisdom. Say, God, right now I feel lonely. What do I do? He goes, seek God. God's going to tell you what to do. You know what he's going to tell you? What I want you to do right now, I want you to get involved in ministry. You're lonely because you're not activating your gifts and your talents. It's time to get back doing what I've called you to do and get busy with the dream. And don't you worry about anything else. I'll add everything to you if you'll just put me first. I'm lonely. I feel like quitting right now. I don't think no one loves me. I think the church is against me. I think Marco said that, Pastor Marco said that sermon just for me. He was pointing me out. I seen it. Did you see him look at me, honey? When he talked about that drinking stuff, he was looking straight at me. And that marijuana stuff, he was looking straight at me. Did you tell him I was smoking weed? Did you tell him? That's why I don't like all this church, all this gossip. That's what I don't like. I know. How many know when you're not doing right, you feel guilty just coming in? Like, everybody's looking at me. No one's looking at you. But when you feel guilty, you think everybody's looking at you. Everybody knows. No one knows. 
Someone say, ask for wisdom. Because if you're in a battle right now, you're in battle for your faith. You're in battle for your perspective. You're in a battle for your thinking. It's important. I'm in a battle. I need some wisdom. I need some perspective. I need some insight. I need some knowledge. I need to know what decisions to make because the decisions you make under pressure are going to determine whether you win or lose. But don't you ever quit under pressure. Don't you throw in the towel under pressure. Don't you start running under pressure. Don't you go to an escape under pressure. Come on. Go to God under pressure. Get some wisdom. Wisdom, get some strategy, get some insight, get a dream, get a vision, get a prophetic word. Under pressure, God wants to speak to you. So under pressure, God wants to speak to us. Does God want to speak to us? We know this because God said, if you lack wisdom, ask. And James 1, 5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom to guide him through a decision or circumstance, he is, he is to ask our benevolent God who gives to everyone generously and without rebuke or blame. It will be given to you. See, if you lack wisdom, this is what he's saying. It will be given to you. I remember one time that I was, I was looking, um, I was at a job and I was there for some years and I got an opportunity to go up north and they were going to give me a, uh, $100,000 raise a year. Boy, did I feel some pressure. Pressure because I needed to leave Southern California and move to Northern California. And this was the issue. I, I was already a youth pastor in my church. I got a call on my life. I have uh, probably around 100 youth that are dependent on my leadership. And I have an assignment. But now the pressure is pulling me, is pulling me away mentally to make a decision that I'll be unfaithful and disloyal and sell out to the money. I really don't know what to do to truth this. But this is what I do do. I pray. I go, God, give me wisdom. Because this sounds like a promotion. It looks like you're trying to bless me. That's why you need wisdom because not everything that looks good is good. Not every offer comes from God, so you need to know. Don't chase after money, chase after doing God's will. And all, everything else will fall into place. So I go, God, what do I do? And this is what God answered me. He told me clearly. He goes, I'll bless you here. You don't have to go there. Because I'm the one that promotes you. I'm the one that blesses you. You don't have to chase after it. My blessings will chase after you. So this is what I did. I turned down the $100,000 raise. Everybody thought I was crazy. But the truth was, this is what the truth was, God was going to bless me here in Southern California. If I would have went there, I wouldn't be here. We would not be, able to say, understand this, the enemy was trying to steal this church for a hundred grand. So I needed some wisdom. You need wisdom, I'll tell you this, you need wisdom in your relationships. Just because he has a J-O-B and he's good looking, he has a car, does not mean that he's a man of God. Late, guys, just because she says she's a Christian and she walks around with her Bible, does not mean that she's a woman of God. Come on, you need, as a matter of fact, it doesn't mean she's for you either. It's very important for you to hear a word from God. We get ourselves in all kinds of mess because we don't ask for advice. He goes, I'm your consultant. I'm giving you my Holy Spirit to give you advice in every decision you make. Why are you rushing to make decisions when you haven't even talked to me, your consultant? If you'll just consult with me, you'll get some victories based on your decisions and you won't have to go into battle after battle after battle that had to, nothing to do with your battles. You added battles by bad decisions. Someone say, let's get a word from God. If God will speak to you, why not? It was probably four months later, I got the same exact promotion here. Three months later, I mean, probably no, six I mean, probably like, no, it was probably like a no, year and a half, two years later, I got another promotion for another 100000 here. And that would have never happened there. 
It's not about the money. I'm not talking about the 100,000 and the other 100,000. This is what I'm talking about. Hearing from God under pressure. Someone said, let's get some wisdom. This is what I ask most of the time. What is God telling you right now? Understand, if you don't know what God's telling you right now, you can't even walk by faith. We need to get a word from God right now about your life and about your future. The enemy wants to keep us confused. And God is saying, you don't need to be confused. If you'll just ask me, I will give you my wisdom generously if you just ask me. I'll give you vision. I'll give you insight. I'll give you my perspective about your situation. And when we get God's perspective, this is what happens. We see things the way they should be. All the fear goes. All the depression goes. Say, this is going to be all right. Some of you guys, right now, someone broke up with you. You have a broken heart in here. And this is what God's saying. Seek me. Let me tell you what's up. God might tell you, I just saved you a world of hell. You should be right now throwing a party. I just saved you from something. You're crying when you should be jumping around like you won the lotto. They missed out on the best part of you. Because the best part of you, they haven't seen yet. They walked out while you were under construction. You better start celebrating now because God has victory in your future. Get excited right now. Yeah, later on, you're going to want to hook up with me. Sorry, sayonara, bye-bye, adios. You're going to even start speaking in tongues, different languages. Someone needs to hear that right now. I remember when I lost my job. I got fired from my job right before I got married. Right the month before I'm on my wedding day, I got fired from my job at Bank of America. I'm marrying Lisa with no J-O-B. She's like, oh my gosh. How is he gonna provide now? I go, baby, don't worry about it. So I sat God, I sought out God. I go, God, what is it? He goes, I closed that door. Oh, I'm going to open a bigger door. See, that wasn't your career. I'm going to open up a career door. See, you're crying about a closed door, but understand this. You didn't have the right perspective. You thought you were rejected, but I was all up in it. I was just ordering your steps because the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. Right now, some of you don't understand what you're going through, and this is what God says. Don't lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge me in all of your ways, and I will make your path straight. It's not as bad as you think. A matter of fact, you're just in transition for the greatest days of your life. Get God's perspective. And the last thing. Always respond in the spirit. Say it with me. Always respond in the spirit. How do we know? This is what was coming against Stephen. They started arguing with him, disputing with him. One, the devil likes to argue. Put arguments in your head. God's not with you. No one loves you. You're not even saved. You're crazy. You're not worth anything. And you start hearing that, those arguments. You got to cast them down. Then they secretly induce men to say, we have heard him. So they start lying to him, lying about him and lying, lying about him. And then they stepped it up and then they persecuted and arrested him. That's what he was dealing with. They lied about him. They, they, they were arguing with him. Then they lied about him and then they arrested him. But look at this in verse 15. And they're watching him as they're arresting him, lying about him, getting false accusers to say stuff in court about him. And they're wondering, how is he going to respond when the false accusers come? Have you ever had someone lie about you? Don't that just make you mad? And you want to like defend yourself? Liar. You, you're nothing but a fat liar. Right? And you're like arguing with them. And the more you say they're a liar, the more the people think that what he's saying is true. Because if he wasn't a liar, why are you reacting so crazy? So, so now these lies are coming against him. Persecution is coming against him. And this is the last thing. Look what happens. 
in verse 15. And all who sat in the council, looking steadily, steadfastly at him, saw his face as the face of an angel. This is what the idea here is. Stephen continued to reflect heaven and love. He did not reflect the hate and persecution that was coming against him. How you win your battle is you don't take on the spirit that's coming against you. You lose when you stop reflecting heaven and stop reflecting hell. I mean heaven, oh no, sorry, my bad. Stop reflecting heaven and love and you start reflecting what's coming against you. So the enemy comes against you with a spirit. And the question is, are you gonna take on that spirit? He rejects you. Are you gonna now all of a sudden walk around all rejected? You got fired from a job. Are you gonna walk around with the spirit of poverty now thinking I'll never get another job? Oh my gosh. Someone walks out on you. Are you gonna walk it with the spirit nobody wants me? Someone's lying about you and now you're taking on their spirit and you're angry and you're full of revenge and I'm gonna get them back. Don't allow, this is how you, we get defeated. We get defeated when we allow their spirit to be our now new reflection. I don't want anybody here, this is what God's saying, I don't want anybody here to walk around with the spirit of your enemy. He goes, I want you to reflect my spirit. That when they look at you after they persecuted you, they talked about you, they lied about you, they walked out on you. When they look at you, they're trying to see if you're going to react. And what they see is no reaction at all. All they see is the same joy, the same peace, the same praise, the same character, the same consistency, the same love. And you tell your enemy, you're not going to get me to move. You're not going to get me to take on your mindset, your spirit, because the one that's in me is the one I reflect and that's the one I'm going to please and that's the one that you're going to see. See, some of you right now, you're in your biggest battle and this is what's happening. Your enemy's looking at you and they're perplexed. How can you still be reflecting the, uh, reflecting the glory of God, the peace of God, the strength of God and you're going to say, I'm bad already. I recognize the strategy of the enemy and I'm not going to take on your spirit. I'm not going to take on the hate. I'm not going to take on the anger. I'm not going to take on the revenge. I'm going to continue to walk in the spirit of God. Is there anybody here ready to get battle ready? You know, this is what I want to say. Love always wins. Say it with me. Love always what? Continue to walk in love. Conquer evil by doing good. Don't let hurt, anger, and evil overcome you. You overcome it by walking in love. And this is what the Bible says, love never fails. You feed your, your enemies, you clothe your enemy, you give them water if they need it. If they're thirsty, give them water. If they're hungry, feed them. You know what God is saying? You stay in my spirit and it will protect you from losses and defeats. You don't get defeated by what's coming against you. You get defeated by your reaction, by what, uh, your reaction to what's coming against you. Continue to love and you'll stay in my power and you'll walk from victory to victory to victory. And I've learned this, when you're getting ready to get promoted, the enemy comes against you full force. Right now, some of you right now are with the football and you're at the one yard line. And God says, come on, you've already run with this ball for 99 yards and you got hit and you got knocked down and you got back up. You, they, 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 they were cheering against you, but somehow you still got the ball and you're in the one yard line. It's not time to give up. You should have gave up at the 50. You should have gave up at the 30. You should have gave up at the 20, but now you're on the one yard line. It's time to push like you've never pushed. Come on, you're there. The battle's already been won. You already got a victory. Give God one more praise. He's a good God. <laughs>